ISO Productions presents another instructional video tutorial from ISO FileMaker Magazine, the professional's resource for FileMaker know-how. Well, hello, and welcome back to yet another tutorial video about learning FileMaker Pro. My name is Matt Petrowski, and I'm bringing you these FileMaker tutorials from my website, FileMakerMagazine.com. In this particular video, we're taking a look at a virtual list sidebar. We're using portal navigation, but we're doing this solution-wide. So this is pretty cool. It integrates icons and all kinds of different things that you can do. This came in from a subscriber. He had a solution. He had a problem he was trying to solve. It gave me the opportunity to create this solution and present it to you. Let's take a look at the file. All right, so here we are in the file, and when the subscriber came to me with his solution, he showed me what he was trying to do. And it's important, and I may reference some of the layouts in his solution so that you get a good idea of what the implications are if you do things within FileMaker tables and within the actual database versus just trying to do them within the UI or within things such as global variables, which I'm using a good number of in this particular solution. But here was the problem. He had a sidebar, which we have over here on this side, and he had up at the top, and I don't have the words, but he had the word expand and collapse. And basically he wanted to expand all of the options, and this was considered a solution-wide navigation. In other words, no matter what the context of the layout was, from layout to layout, this same sidebar needed to appear. Now as I click on this and I expand, you can see that I have features such as the icon, I have the arrow which toggles between a, a right pointing state and a down pointing state, I have a menu item which is different colored, and then I also have a menu when you select on a different menu, you can see that it's actually changing. So there is a lot of different things with regards to state and what's going on. And another cool thing that you need to know about this is that you're not limited, even though this is a portal, to just showing these buttons on the side. If, for example, I wanted to expand this home button and have the first option actually be a search option or a field that when I clicked, I would go into that field and be able to search, say, within that area, it would be really applicable here in the people. So here you can see that I have the word search, but I want you to envision that this word search would be replaced with a field. That is very doable although not implemented into this, uh, this particular technique file. So what we're going to do is we're going to take a look at how we actually make this work, where you can move between all kinds of different layouts, you can bring up new windows, which is what this button does, you can basically do whatever you want, and you can do it with a very small collection of scripts. There are, in fact, three scripts, and you only need one table, one dedicated field per table, and a few other things like global variables and a few custom functions. But we're going to take a look at how this is implemented and how you can copy this directly into your own solution. As I mentioned, just before we head into the actual solution, I wanted to address something with regards to how this was initially implemented, which is definitely not a reflection on this uh, particular subscriber's ability to implement a database. It's just a degree of lack of understanding of how things may work within FileMaker. But that's why I love this particular situation where a subscriber, you, sends in a solution or sends in a problem that you're having and then it allows me the opportunity to uh, explain and give information to not just you as the individual sub, uh, sending in the file but also anyone else such as those of you watching this video. Now what was sent in was you can see that within this particular table you can see right here that we have this name, and this name has all of the different possible menu sidebar items that there were. You can also see that there's a container field right here which actually contains an icon. Now, there's nothing wrong with implementing things within a table as long as you know how to abstract what functionality the table performs versus what's done within the actual user interface. Because when this was started out, with the perspective being that, oh, I need a table in order to store all of my menu items, going into a table initially locks you into FileMaker's record metaphor. So unless you know that you're going to work with global fields, which become unique to each and every client that actually opens up the FileMaker database, what you're doing is you're essentially saying, 
that any change that anybody else makes to the table will affect everybody else. Say, for example, this item right here is collapsed. So with regards to, let's say, this main menu of projects right here. This main menu of projects is currently set to a value of one collapsed. Well, let's say user A opens up the FileMaker solution and they make a change and this becomes a zero for user A. Well, guess what? Because this is a local field, that change will affect user B, C, D, and all other users because this field data is at the local record level. So you need to migrate your thinking anytime that you want to do something that's user specific that is specific to their general session. You're not going to want to use a FileMaker table in order to store this information. Now also in this particular situation, he was using a technique that's actually very powerful, which is a parent-child within the same table ancestor type of relationship. You can see that he has this ID for each of the individual menu items then he has the ID ancestors. So in other words, this menu of test is an ancestor to this root menu of home. So in the particular implementation, which we're going to take a look at in the file, this is only a two level menu. By two levels, I mean that we're not going and expanding this menu item and then from it having some other items expanding and then having more items expanding. That's more representative of what they call a tree or in terms of the hierarchy, you would have a, um, sometimes they're called a expanding tree widget or I've, there's a number of different names, but we've only got two levels. We've got the main root level and then we have all of our sub items. So this is pretty easy to actually solve and do it completely without a FileMaker table. In fact, the way that I solved it was completely within scripts. So let's take a look at how I implemented this and how you're able to implement into your own solution using the steps that are on this first page. There's six steps. You're basically going to copy the whole table named sidebar. We hope you've enjoyed this video tutorial and we'd like to say thank you for your subscription and your support. If you're not already a subscriber, head on over to www.filemakermagazine.com slash subscribe for more information about the benefits of joining.